For people uh, speaking in the classroom, mm -hmm. you can do one of two things. You can repeat back their question. Yes. Or we can just pass them the mic. There's a second mic. Got it. So whatever works for you. Okay. Then the audio is good. Uh, okay. Is this on Zoom or just being recorded? We're just going to record it on Perfect. Zoom. Okay. So if anything happens, you don't have to. Lose. Yeah. Check, check, check. Sometimes I forget to look at the chat box. That's why I was asking. Uh, yes. Um, speaker, microphone. I don't even know what time it is. Is there a, oh yeah, there was a clock in here, but it's not working. Oh no, I'm good. Thank you. Check, 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 one, two. So here's the second one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I should have brought wine or something for this class. It's a very dry <laughs> class. Wine? Yeah. The yeah, I heard. I heard that place is really good. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, once we get started, you'll be like, should have, should have brought some. <laughs> We're clicking through. You can just click this in the next. Perfect. Window. Perfect. Got it. Thank you. What time is it? Oh, five, six minutes. Okay. Do I have to hit record or you're going to do that? Oh, it is. Okay, got it. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. No problem. Yeah, it is. Do we do you think we need to have a pen and paper or I'm thinking Ethan's gonna send this to everyone. But if you want to take notes because there's little anecdotes and stuff like that that we talk about, so totally up to you. Yeah. How long have you all been agents for? I've been an agent for a year. Okay, nice. I started here in China. Okay, I mean, I was an agent before, but I Got it. Cool. Same here. A year. Same here. A year. Awesome. What about you? Less than a year. Less than a year. Oh, wow. No, I thought you actually were more than No, I'm more than A newborn. Nice. How old is Jones? And your son? 18 years. Oh, wow. So where are all the newbies? 18 years. I don't know. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. We, we've only seen the lows. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it all depends on how you look at it, what a low is, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 23 was a little shaky for some people, but I think a lot of people thought 2020 was how it was always going to be, and it, that was like a fluke. Come on in. Hi. Hi. Take a seat. Well, I'm so glad we're having this class so that you're good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I like that's why I like teaching this class because I feel like people wait until, oh my God, I got a listing. What do I do now? And it's yeah. like, oh my God, why are you coming to me asking me this when and I realized there was no class actually explaining. So this is a good class. It's just a lot of information. And just so you know, there's probably some personalities that are going to think you got to memorize all this. You don't. You'll get the PowerPoint. And you can go back and reference. Yeah. So everyone's always afraid of the front row. It's funny. <laughs> oh, it's too close. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Cool. I'm going to write down my phone number up here so you guys could take it down. And I literally mean this when I say it. You can call or text me anytime. Oh. I hope these are all good pens to use. Six, six, one. And I believe Joey mentioned you work out of the West Side office. Yeah. Oh. 
what's my number? Here we go. <laughs> number eight. Eight. Six. Uh, no, he doesn't have a beard. Frank Bernardo, that's my husband. He doesn't have a beard. He has really cool white hair. This is my Instagram. It's at Freckled Realtor. Okay, and then here's my name. Is it two minutes? Tofty, yeah. Hi. 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 Wow. <laughs> There's people. Okay. Sounds good. No worries. No worries. Take your time. I did both. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Hi. You are not coming to this class, are you? I am. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Okay. I wasn't nervous before. <laughs> no, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. That is so funny. Everyone's like, I'm a new agent. I've been here in one year. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then you walk in. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, okay. to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Always a lot to learn. Yeah. For sure. Happy New Year. You too. You too. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I'll just wait for them to come back and get started. Did you guys go to Caravan? You did? Yeah. How was it? Was it good? I didn't do the whole thing. Okay. And because I lived there running, I, yeah. I didn't want to come here. I yeah. I went to the ones kind of here. Totally. And then I'll sit through some scripts. That sounds good. You know what? I could go, but I haven't gone. In Santa Clarita, they used to do caravan, but they don't anymore. Why is that? Yeah. I think just agents got lazy and, yeah. It just, we don't, we haven't done it in a really long time. Um, but people still have broker opens, just not a broker uh, caravan. Yeah. And what day is their broker open? It's here, it's Tuesday. Whenever people want to do them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They're all over. Different areas sometimes that yeah. Different That's how it used to be back in the day when I first started. Could, yeah. Hi. How are you? Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Wow. All right, guys, we'll get started in like one minute. Okay. Hey, video. Get my glasses. Sure. If you want to. Let me look smart and <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Everybody good? to get started. Okay, awesome. So let me just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Tracy Tofty. I've been in real estate for 18 years and I'm still here. I get my grays colored every five weeks. Real estate is a little bit stressful sometimes. 
Um, this is my Instagram at Freckled Realtor. This is my phone number. And this is how you spell my name. I literally mean this. This is not an empty statement. Call me anytime. Call me anytime after the class. Call me if you finally get a listing and you're like, oh my God, Tracy said something and I don't remember what it was. Just call me, text me. I love to help people. I am the education chair of our ALC for the education committee at our office at KW Westside. I've been the education chair for almost every office I've ever been a part of at Keller Williams and been many. So again, I love to help people. That's my jam. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, I made a joke, but I kind of wasn't joking that we should have had wine at this class because the class is very like, it's very dry. It's just very informational. It's all about what happens from the moment you get a listing to when the listing closes. So it's going to feel a lot like I'm just reading off of the presentation, but stop me anytime, ask me any questions if something doesn't make sense. Um, Tiffany here has been in the business a really long time, so she's going to chime in too if she sees something that I might have missed, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, oh, by the way, I just want to show of hands, how many people have been in the business under a year? Okay, gotcha. And then a year to three years? Okay, anybody over three years? Okay, perfect. All right, sounds good. I just kind of like to know who's in the room. All right, let's get started. So this is A to Z of a listing, what you do from beginning to end. I found that when I was mentoring people, people would wait until they got a listing and then freak out and try to figure out what they're supposed to do. So this class is sort of to help you think ahead and get familiar with things so you're not kind of like a deer in the headlights. Okay. All right, so preparing for a listing appointment. When you are talking to somebody on the phone and they're thinking about listing their house, does anybody want to chime in on what kinds of questions you might think are important to ask before you go on the appointment? Why do you want to sell? Perfect, I love that. You want to know their motivation. You also want to know who's going to be at the appointment. Are the decision makers going to be at the appointment? I can't tell you when I was new in the business how I'd get all psyched and ready to go on an appointment. And then they'd say, okay, well, my husband's not here and he's the one that needs to make the decision. So I'll explain to him everything you told me today. And then I just knew I was dead in the water. So you want to make sure the decision makers are going to be there. What else? What other things do you guys think might be important to know? Timeline. Timeline. That's perfect. I love it. Also, maybe how much they owe on the property. I'm a person that likes to go to a listing appointment with a couple different net sheets. Does anyone know what a net sheet is? Net. Okay, good. If you don't, let me know and I'll explain what a net sheet is. Okay, cool. Oh, and net, yeah. Uh, when you yeah. talk about like who's going to be the meeting, the question would be just asking the time, like, who's be I would say either who's going to be at the meeting or are the decision makers going to be at the meeting? Or are you the one making the final decision and he or she might say, well, my spouse and I really need to discuss it. Great. Will you both be there at the appointment? Because I'd love to give my presentation to the both of you. That's, I would say something along those lines. Okay, okay perfect. So you're going to want to know how much they owe on the property, what, when they want to move, what, why they're moving, where they're going to, things of that nature. The other thing I like to ask is, you know, since I haven't seen your property, I know I'm going to see it on Wednesday at five o'clock. In getting prepared for everything, putting the comps together, do you have any upgrades that you've done to the property? You know, I can see on title if it has a pool or not, but I don't always 100% rely on title because sometimes title isn't always correct. So the more questions you ask, the better. So you can be best prepared. It's interesting when you get a seller started talking, they tell you more information than you really ask for. And those are really key things to hone in on. For example, they might say, well, my neighbor did all these upgrades and they did a terrible job, but we did these upgrades and we hired a professional contractor and they didn't and we added X, Y, and Z and oh yeah, we did this and oh yeah, we did that. That's all great information to write down when you're talking to them to better prepare you when you go on your appointment. Okay, so now that you have all of that information, you're gonna pull up the title report. I go online to pull up my title report from my title rep on their website, I would write down in bold somewhere that you need to have a relationship with a title officer or a title rep. They are going to be your BFF. They are part of your team. 
So when you're a single agent, you're not really a single agent. You have a team of people that you work with that you're going to rely on. And your title rep is going to be super important. Okay. So my title rep is going, I'm going to pull up the title report, but I'm also going to ask my title rep. I just want to know, do you see anything here that I need to be concerned about? I'm going to check the names on the title report. That's another thing I've run into is she'll say her name is, you know, it's Michael and Alice Smith, but then I'll go on the title report and it's other people's names, or there's an additional name on there. And it's like, okay, wait a minute, who's this person? And are they going to be at the appointment? Important to know. Also, if somebody's passed away, you're going to want to know all of that information. So everything kind of needs to match or at least know what you're walking into before you go on the appointment. Does that all make sense? Perfect. Okay. The next thing you're going to want to have together is your listing presentation. This class is not about what goes in your listing presentation. Hopefully that's another class that's been taught here, but you want to have your listing presentation put together and you want to practice your listing presentation. You don't want to practice on your clients. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. You want to practice it with another agent in the office or on a family member something like that. If you practice with someone in the office, I would try to get somebody to throw you some different objections so you know how to handle those objections. Make sense? Okay, perfect. You're gonna also bring with you your listing agreement. I always leave the price blank and that's the RLA, the residential listing agreement and the KLA, that's for the lockbox. I always bring those with me. Now, Depending on whether or not I know the people or I think there's a really good chance I'm going to get this listing signed when I go, I also bring the seller's disclosures. We're going to get to that in a second. But this is the basic stuff that you need from your car forms, RLA and the KLA, residential listing agreement and the lockbox. Any questions on that? Perfect. Okay. The next thing you're going to bring with you are the comps. Now, I know comps out here, pulling comps out here is different than where I live in Santa Clarita. I've sold out here, so I know how it works. Santa Clarita, it's a lot of tracks. So you're basically pulling the track within the last 90 days, within a one mile radius. You know, it's pretty straightforward, but out here, it's a little bit different. So I imagine you guys know how to pull comps, but you want to bring the most recent comps as possible. Uh, yes. So aside from their house, how many comps is too many or too little? Is it a really good number? Or? It's truly, well, in the last couple of years, it's truly going to be whatever you can find that's going to work in your situation because there hasn't been a whole lot of sales. But I try really hard not to overwhelm them. So let's say there's 14 that could work. I try not to bring all 14. I try mm -hmm. to narrow it down. Yeah. And, and that's really not that hard to do. You know, I would bring, <laughs> maybe bring like your... Um, group A and group B, and you can save them on your computer. You don't necessarily have to print them all out, but what you're going to show is the comps. There's always that chance when you go on an appointment, they're going to say, well, I know that yellow house around the corner sold for a million dollars. And you're like, I didn't bring that comp. Save them all. So you can say, yes, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're definitely going to want to bring the past sales. What's active on the market does matter because that's your competition, but you also want to bring the last closed sales, especially the most recent ones, because that's what an appraiser is going to be taking a look at to make sure you're not overpricing. I always think the easiest way to get a seller into reality on what to list their house for if they're kind of pie in the sky thinking is to show them the comps that have recently closed. I always save all of the photos. That's another great way to get them to see that their house isn't as spiffy as they think it is without you saying it. Mm -hmm. Let's look through the pictures. We'll go through all the photos so they can kind of see they haven't done as many upgrades as the one that sold 50,000 higher. Yes. So the photos that you're referring to for those neighboring houses, mm -hmm. are you printing those off of your MLS? Yeah, from the MLS. Okay. Yep. I'll either save them as a PDF or I'll print them. Just depending on the client, how tech savvy they are, if they're going to be able to give me their Wi-Fi password, all of that stuff. Yeah, I take all that into consideration. Um, okay, past sales. And then know your UVP. Do you guys know what a UVP is? A UVP is your unique value proposition. You really need to go into your appointments knowing your UVP, knowing what makes you different from everybody else. So that's something to really consider and think about. I'm going to call Tiffany out here. Tiffany, what's your UVP? 
um, that we have a small group, mm -hmm. which is kind of the, it's the best, I guess it's the ideal version because we don't have a huge team. Where right. We have to get people. Yeah. Um, but you're not also not one person. So you have multiple points of contact if need be. Awesome. Yeah. So you have leverage on your yeah. team. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I always say that my UVP is that I am an over communicator. I find that when escrows go sideways, it's because there hasn't been enough communication to the seller. And as human beings, when we don't know all the answers, we kind of tend to tell ourselves stories in our head. And then that's when the transaction goes sideways. So you'll find that I am an over communicator and I love to tell you everything that's going on and you're up to date on everything. So that's my UVP. I like to keep things as stress-free as possible. So let's move on to the next one. Does anyone have any questions about all that? Unique value. Unique value proposition. UVP. Yes. Somewhere down the line, someone's going to say, well, what makes you different from the other five listing agents that came through my door? They don't always care that you sold the most homes. It's really about the connection and, you know, what you're going to bring to the table to make the transaction as smooth as possible. Okay. Okay. All right. Preparing to go in the MLS. So now let's say you got the listing signed. Congratulations. Now you're going to send your listing agreement to your transaction coordinator. I hope everyone here, another member to your team, even if you're a single agent, you have your title rep, you need a TC transaction coordinator. Okay. I, I'm assuming you guys have one here in the yeah, office. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you definitely want to work with a TC. You're also going to get your disclosures from your TC, all the seller's disclosures. Me personally, I like to have my seller start filling out those disclosures ASAP. So they're done. If there's anything that I'm looking through those disclosures that she's like, oh, well, the fireplace doesn't work and there's a leak under the kitchen sink. I want to know all about that stuff from the get go. It's also better to have all those disclosures done and signed off. So when we do get an offer, we're not rushing to get that seller to finish them and get them ready. So we have to turn them over to the buyer once we have an accepted offer. So your TC will get you all of those disclosures that you need. Bring your disclosures to the seller to start filling out. I just mentioned that, including your AVID. Your AVID is your agent visual inspection disclosure. Is anyone not familiar with the AVID? Okay. Okay. It's the bane of my existence. It's this form that you have to go through on every property and fill out anything you visually see wrong with the property. So for example, if I was doing a visual inspection of this room, there's a scuff mark on this wall, or there's nail holes, or there's stains on the floor, or there's a stain on the carpet. You just have to make notes of all of these things on your avid. Hi, no worries. Uh, yeah, a agent visual inspection disclosure, and your TC will give that to you. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule my photographer, videographer, drone footage, whatever you plan on doing for the property. Let's say, for example, when I went on the listing appointment, the house was a disaster and a complete mess. I'm going to make sure that the money I'm spending for all those photos, I'm not wasting it and they've got the property ready to go. So for example, if I see that the place is a mess, I might say, okay, let's talk about what we need to do to fix up the property. And then I'm going to set another appointment to come by and take a look at it, maybe a day or two before we have the photographer scheduled. That's super important. I can't tell you. I, I've been burned by that, showing up with a photographer and the place does not look any better than it did when we took the listing. Okay, you're going to start entering the listing into the MLS. You guys have a different MLS here than I have. Um, I think you guys are the MLS and I'm the other one. Um, you can enter the listing and save it as incomplete. So I'm thinking you guys might be able to do that too. Okay. So I always suggest start entering it right away. It's super tedious. It takes a little bit of time and you wanna make sure you're not making any mistakes. By the way, you're gonna get a copy of all of this. Yeah, so don't stress. Um, and then start writing the MLS description and get the seller's approval. So you know that description where you spell out everything about the property, start writing it out. I always like to get the seller's approval. I think nobody knows the house better than the seller themselves. 
So you want to get their opinion. I don't like them to write it. I like to write it, but then get their input on what I've written. That's why they're hiring us, right? We still have to do the work. Okay. Put the lockbox on the property. And then if you're having a sign installed, get that installed. Any questions on this? Yes. Sorry. That's okay. So is it safe to assume or say this is day two or three going into that week of the presentation? You get the agreement signed? Yep. Like this is like, closer. yeah, this is like the day of or the very next day. Okay. When I'm there, I'm going to ask her when, or him, when is a good day for us to do the photos based on how the property looks? And I'll go ahead and say, okay, I'll call you back later today and let you know when that's scheduled. I may or may not bring the disclosures with me that day, or I might say, okay, I'm going to bring the disclosures to you tomorrow. By the way, on the disclosures, I always highlight my thing looks like a coloring book when I hand over the disclosures. I highlight everywhere they're supposed to sign, initial, and date. And I also draw a big highlight around the areas that they have to fill out, where it's a yes or no question. And if the answer is yes, where they have to give their explanation on everything. I try to help them out. The worst thing is picking up the disclosures, going through it, and then realizing, oh, crap, they forgot to fill out something. So that still might happen, but it helps with the highlights. Okay. Yeah. What? All the highlights on the form. Is it what? It's not front of the form. Like as far as it hasn't for me in the 18 okay. years. Yeah. Okay. My brokers that I've always had at KW have never said anything about that. Yeah. Yep. Good. Have any of you gotten complaints for highlights? Okay, just checking. Okay. Um, so this is about coming soon and going live in the MLS. So this is my preference. It doesn't always work out this way. I like to put my listing in the MLS Monday or Tuesday as coming soon. And then it goes live Wednesday through Sunday and offers are due on Monday. I like doing this because it gives people time. It gives people time to let their clients know about the property, schedule something and not feel rushed. Like, oh, you know what? She went on the market on Thursday and they're probably gonna accept an offer on Saturday. I like to let them know ahead of time in the agent remarks, we are reviewing offers on Monday. Okay. We don't have caravans out in Santa Clarita. Yeah. But we occasionally do open houses depending on the property itself. And if an agent wants to preview the property before they bring their client, that's fine. I, I'm totally down to help anybody out. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's what I'm also going to do on my Facebook posts, stories, and reels. Even if it's just in there, it's coming soon. I mean, you got to, you know, it's basically like if you have a listing, there are so many opportunities to post on social media about it. You're walking into a listing agreement. There's a post. You have a signed listing agreement. There's a post. You're putting a sign in front of the yard. There's a post. It's coming soon. There's another post. There's so many different things that you could do to monopolize on the fact that you just took a new listing and show everybody in your database and your followers that you do business. Okay. In the same thing with Instagram posts, stories, and reels. We also do something on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel and then we do marketing to our database. We use MailChimp to send out mass emails to all of our database. And we also have another database that we send personal emails to. I know I'm supposed to say command, but I don't understand. Okay. Uh, and then marketing to other agents. That's another really important thing. Marketing at your team meeting, talking to the other agents in the office. That's super important. So these are all the things that we do. Once I know the photos are done, I'm up and in the MLS is coming soon. This is when I start doing all of this. Okay. Any questions on this page? Oh, okay, perfect. All right, so now let's say we got an offer. Let's say we have multiple offers because I like to think positive. You are going to, this is me personally, I like to print out all of the offers. I like making stacks of all of my offers and I get out my trusty highlighter pen and I also go on my computer in a Word document. So I can make kind of like a summary page of all of the offers that we have. I review all the offers. I call the agents for any missing information and I ask questions about the buyer and I verify with the lender. This is so important. You, this is so important. I can't even tell you how important this is. There have been so many times when I realized either they didn't include the pre-approval letter or the buyer truly really isn't pre-approved 
or I call the agent and they'll mention, oh yeah, we wrote on three other properties this weekend too. And that gives me the opportunity to find out that they're really not serious about this property. All kinds of things are really important that you want to pick up the phone, not text, pick up the phone and call and ask questions. Now, if they don't use my lender, another person on your team, you have your title person, your TC and your lender, I have my lender call their lender and verify. Okay. So these are all really important things. So if you have five or six offers, it's going to take a little bit of time. But it's you're doing your due diligence and it's kind of helping you kind of see who's going to rise to the top when you're presenting the offers. Okay. Again, if you have a lot of offers, I just put highlights like where the price is, what their close of escrow is, how much they're putting down, or you can just put it all on a Word document. Okay, schedule face-to-face -face with the seller to review all the offers. You wanna make sure all the decision makers are there. And you want to bring your computer to write out counter offers or SMCL seller multiple counter offers just in case. Okay, any questions on that so far? It's a lot of information, okay. So then now let's say I've come back and I've decided we're gonna do a seller multiple counter to two people then I'm going to email those two people with their multiple counter offer or send it to my TC to send it out. And then I'm going to let the other agents know that we, that the seller went ahead and they're doing a multiple counter to two others, that theirs was not the one that the seller chose. Okay. Once you get that back, you're going to review responses with the seller and pick up completed disclosures from the seller. Send the final offer with the fully executed offer counter of if any to your transaction coordinator. And then your TC is gonna open escrow and you're gonna change in the MLS to backup offers only. Any questions on that? It's pretty straightforward. Okay, everyone good? Ask as many as you want, that's why I'm here. I don't wanna, this is all the command or is just through email to your transaction coordinator and he or she can put it? I think you can do it through command, but I'm not in command and neither is my TC. So it's all either text or email. Okay. And yeah, my TC is like my right hand well, person. It, yeah. It yeah. Okay. Yep. My suggestion is, is you come up and, and I would love to know what Tiffany does, but you need to have some kind of system where either you're sending it direct to the agent and ceasing your TC or you're sending it to your TC to send out and ceasing you. You just want to make sure your TC always has the same information and you both aren't doing the same work and then you're missing what each other have done, right? Is that kind of how you guys run your team? Yeah, our, so my virtual assistant will put together the email with all the paperwork. Yeah. We'll review it and the virtual assistant sees me assistant and the TC. Perfect. So that works. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. That works. Yeah. I, I am the virtual assistant and the assistant, <laughs> but I totally get it. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, all right. Awesome. Let's move on. Okay. So escrow just opened. You're going to send your completed disclosures to the TC to send to the buyer's agent. Sometimes that buyer's agent will have their own set of disclosures that need to be sent back to us to be signed as well. You're gonna verify with escrow, the buyer's deposit is in escrow within three business days. Now, my suggestion, if you're the listing agent that you're choosing an escrow company that you have a very strong, great relationship with. Do you guys have an in-house escrow company here? Okay, perfect. So I'm supposed to say, use them. Use your in-house escrow company. Um, did the seller agree to a termite inspection? If so, you need to order that. You need to put dates on your calendar when the contingencies are going to be due for home inspection, loan approval, if any, and appraisal. Appraisal. This is really important, guys, that fourth bullet point down to put that in your calendar. My TC is busy. I can't always 100% rely on him or her to always tell me. It's really your responsibility to know when those contingency dates are and stay on top of that to make sure that you're going after the other agent to say, hey, this contingency is due, we need your contingency removal. Does everybody get, understand that? Okay, perfect. That's our responsibility. If there is an HOA, make sure escrow is aware and orders the HOA documents and CCNRs. Um, there is a charge to the seller for the HOA documents. 
And after a few days, if you have not heard from the buyer's agent, reach out to see when the home inspection is taking place. I don't wait a few days. I actually call the day after we've opened escrow and their deposit is in escrow to make sure that they're on top of it and they've started the process of getting their home inspection scheduled. Okay, and then after a week, if you have not heard from the appraiser, reach out to the lender to see that the appraisal was ordered. Sometimes you'll find buyers will kind of drag their feet until after the home inspection for the lender to order the appraisal. And then they'll just say, oh, sorry, I'm running a little bit late on the appraisal. You want to make sure that they know you're on top of it and that everything is moving forward. Okay, perfect. Any questions on that? All good? Okay. All right. Inspections and appraisal. I can barely see. Okay. So you've received the home inspection. So the buyers have done their home inspection. You've received the home inspection and the request for repairs and termite inspection if needed. You're going to set an appointment to meet with the seller face to face. And you're going to bring the RRRR, which is the response to the request for repairs. Okay. That's going to be what you write up their response to what they've sent you, which is all their requests. This is probably one of the stickiest points of the transaction is once you get the home inspection back and you get the laundry list from the buyer of all of the repairs that they want to have done, okay? This is um, truly a class in and of itself to walk through this. Um, it's really important in the beginning, that's why I said in the beginning, when you get those disclosures, to have the seller tell you what's not working so you can try to get those fixed ahead of time, if possible. Um, but a lot of times it's really important to know what's a cosmetic repair and what's a safe and healthy, safe and health repair. A lot of times clients will put on their request for repairs that they want things fixed that aren't really a safety issue. It's more of a cosmetic issue. And our job as sellers is to keep the most money in our seller's pocket and to really go through that list with our client to make sure that they understand the difference. I don't know if you guys realize this, but a seller does not have to fix anything. They don't, they don't have to do anything. Um, they could also offer a credit if they don't feel like fixing anything and they can fix one of the 10 things that are on the list or none. So it's really up to them, but it's good to know the difference between all of these things and have some good vendors in your phone of people that you can recommend if they do decide to fix some of the repairs. Okay? Yes. So on listings, sometimes it will say on the listing, no repairs are working. Or being sold. Out. Yeah, people will still out. ask. And so yeah. not everybody's going to say that, even yeah. though they're not that willing. Yeah. To do. So I've had both. I've had people say, please put in there that I'm selling it as is. I'm not doing any repairs. I refuse. And then they finally get an offer and then they find the dream house that they want. And they're like, okay, I'll fix that stuff. So you just never know. But even when you write it in there, it's the buyer's agent's job to take you on the home inspection. If there's something wrong, it's their job to really send a request for repairs. So you're not going to stop it regardless. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, make sure your TC has a copy of the home inspection report, termite report, the RR, which is the request for repairs, and the RRRR, which is the response to the request for repairs, and any addendums. If you feel that there may be an appraisal gap, do not complete the RRRR until you know the home has come in at value, just in case there is an appraisal gap and the seller needs to reduce their sales price. So let me explain this. Let's say we just got a list from Tiffany's buyer for 10 things that they want fixed and my client is feeling very happy and jolly and says, yes, I'm gonna fix all of those things. I am not going to send that back to Tiffany until I know that the appraisal came in at our sales price of 900,000. Because if the appraisal comes in at 850, then we have an issue. And I don't want to already agree that we're going to fix all the 10 things on her property. So that's really important. Slow your roll. Don't send it until you get your appraisal back. Okay. At the appraisal appointment, oh my God, this is a huge one. Always bring comps. Always meet the appraiser. This is your duty to the seller. It looks really bad if you don't meet the appraiser at the appointment or if someone on your team meet the appraiser at the appointment. Don't let the appraiser just go and meet the seller. That's, that's not part, that being there is part of your job, making sure that it's gonna comp out, giving comp, showing value, showing all the upgrades. You know, sometimes you go to the appraiser and you'll say, 
you know what? We had 10 offers and nine of the 10 offers were over list price. This is what the market is saying right now. Buyers are willing to pay this. I might even print out that one page that I did where I presented all my offers to the seller to show the appraiser. I'm also going to bring comps, recent comps that, that they can use. I don't assume that they're pulling the right comps. I bring them anyway. Okay, cool. And I always say to the appraiser, I know you know how to do your job, but I hope it's okay. I brought some comps to give you. You can look at them later and I'll just slip them over to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Once the home inspection has been completed, termite completed, appraisal completed, and there is no appraisal gap and seller has signed off on the RRRR, it is time to get the full contingency removal from the buyer. Until then, it's still showing as backup offers. Once you get the full contingency removal back in the MLS, you're going to change it to pending. Okay, any questions on any of that? Okay. Cool. Agree or disagree with anything, Tiffany? You do? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we are towards the end of escrow and escrow has closed. I don't know how to move this little window thing. Can I do it on there? No. Yeah. Kind of see. Can't even read my. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. So towards the end of escrow, make sure seller is packing. Oh my God, I have a great story about that. <laughs> know their move out date and know where to leave extra keys, garage remotes, HOA keys, passes, et cetera. That can be overlooked very easily. The seller understanding their timeline, you know? Um, I always like to put in possession days when we're doing counter offers, which means if Tiffany's buyer is asking for a 30 day escrow, I always pull out a calendar with the seller and say, okay, that's on a Wednesday. You have a job Monday through Friday. Should we ask for five extra possession days? So that gives you some extra time to move out. Great. Does that work? Okay. So this means you have to be out of the property Sunday by 5 PM. Let's mark that in your calendar. So make sure we're all on the same page. Um, I always have extra keys, garage remotes and all of that in one of the kitchen drawers. It's just easy to do it like that. Schedule the final walkthrough with the buyer's agent and the seller. Sometimes the buyer would like the seller to be there on the final walkthrough in case there's like an alarm system or a certain way to turn on the pool. They can kind of be there to explain all of that. Um, if they want the seller there, I try to be there as well. I don't ever leave my seller unattended. Um, check with escrow to see if they need anything else from the seller, if they got the escrow package. Schedule the sign to be removed from the yard. And then if you do social media, take a photo with the client. And then we always ask for a testimonial in an email with links to our Zillow page, our Google page. And of course, along the way, as you do milestones, you're also asking for referrals and hoping that you're doing a really good job. That's super important. We bring a closing gift and we also post that on social media as well. Any questions? What do you think oh my God, we've done all different things. One year we had um, these really nice um, cutting boards that were engraved with our logo on it. We've done cut go knives. We've done um, Harry and David food baskets. Uh, we had one client that we sold their house and they used us to buy a house a referral in Virginia and they were gonna drive across town, across town, across the United States. And we put together this whole basket of car snacks and car games. And that was fun. I'm actually finding it more fun to like put together our own baskets because it's more customized to who they are because you really get to know who they are. Yeah. So. So testimonials, you only ask for Google and Zillow? I only ask for Google and Zillow. Yep. And then I'll take those and I'll go on Canva and I'll make them into something else. And yeah, all of that stuff. So any other questions, you guys? I mean, I'm, I'm here. So you got me for 20 more minutes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's okay. Final walkthrough, yeah. Um, that goes to your transaction coordinator. Yeah, the VP, the verification of property. Yep, that's the last form. And, um, you know, there's, oh, I wanted to tell you one more thing. When you, I learned this lesson, I've, I've had to buy a couple refrigerators for people in my career because I made a mistake. 
If you put in the MLS, what's included and excluded, I always repeat all of that in my counter offer, okay? Sometimes people will put in their offers, they want the microwave, the fridge, the washer, dryer, and the refrigerator, and they're not paying attention to the MLS. The MLS does not supersede the contract. The contract is a contract. So I always go in and see what I put for included and excluded, copy it and paste it into my counter offer. Like I said, I bought two refrigerators in my career because I, I messed up because they assumed they were going to get it. I didn't catch it and I didn't copy it over from the MLS into the counter offer. The other thing that's really important is during all of the Mishigasan going on with moving, sometimes the seller forgets, oh, wait, I'm supposed to leave the refrigerator and it ends up on a moving truck. I've had that happen too, where I had to pay the moving company to come bring it back. Because there was, it wasn't my mistake, but just with everything going on. So those are really important things not to overlook because they have so many things on their mind when they're moving. Okay. Anything else you guys? Thank you. I try to make it super detailed and everyone will have their own style and ways of doing things. But in general, these are things to be thinking about. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to make sure Ethan sends it out to everybody. And again, all my contact information is over there. Cool. Yeah. Um, so when you have, when you're representing the seller and the buyer um, concedes to a, a rent Uh huh. when do you have that um, walkthrough, that second walkthrough before the seller actually Okay, so I've we've done it a couple different ways. We have done it before funding, done it before funding so to make sure that the buyer is good with how the property looks. And we've also done it again when they're actually supposed to move out. Yeah, it's, it's probably wise to do it both times just to make sure that everything's looking good. Is and I always say, huh? Is there a hold back then or a fund at all in case the second one is we have had that before, but I don't, it, it all depends on how I feel about how the transaction is going, okay. but I, we don't usually, we probably should, but I haven't had a problem with it. Um, and how would you mathematically figure out what the hold that would be for? For the funds? Yeah, like what, how much, how much in funds would you hold that? I guess it really depends on the property and what kind of valuables are there and the price point and all of that. Yeah. But I always in the counter offer after the offer has been accepted, we always do the SIP form and all of the things that we have to do to figure out all of the correct dates. And I'll say up front that we're going to do two walkthroughs, one before we fund and one at the end. So there's no surprises. Sometimes sellers are really cool with people coming to their property, but towards their end, the end, they're like, enough is enough. You've already been here like four times. So yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I keep looking at you. Uh, so keep them coming. That's in the stuff your seller here um, decides to give us $10,000 to the price of the Okay. Is that, is that in the counter? And can it be in the counter along with other items or is that a separate one? So if in the buyer's offer, they're not asking for a credit, my, my client wouldn't offer a credit unless they were asking. If they are requesting a credit, then I won't counter it out. Then it'll be there. However, if they're not asking for a credit, but then we get this huge request for repairs and my client doesn't want to lose the buyer or they're willing to give because they do see that there's problems with the property, we'll offer a credit on that form, on the response to the request oh, for repairs. Yeah. yeah. Did I answer that? Yeah. That makes sense? Okay, cool. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you I got you out of here in under an hour. You. <laughs> You're welcome. Very important. Good. I'm glad. Um, they didn't give me one. Oh, you know what? Let me ask you this for you though. Because I don't know if you send it to everyone. I did register. Oh, then you'll probably send it to them. Yeah. Thanks so much. Huh? Yeah, you know what? Let me let me ask you then. I'll turn it off. No, no, no.
Number on what's the common number of the square footage for all the properties. Yes, and we 